Don't die. Mission Pro Wrestling, the symbol of excellence in women's sports entertainment. love that music. I love the Mission Pro theme song. Awesome sauce. Hey, Mission Pro family. This is Mind Runner, or as you know, Thunder Rosa calls me Mid Runner. And we've got an awesome show of our Mission Pro Spotlight tonight. All kinds of stuff going on in the world of women's wrestling. We're going to be going through the women's wrestling news. We've got our banger of the week. It was a real tough call this week because we had a lot of banger matches to go for. Our Warrior of the Week has been selected, as well as our special guest will be arriving soon. In just a moment, our special guest will be joining us to uh, get, we're going to get to know our special guest, a very familiar face in the uh, realm of Mission Pro Wrestling. It is the Submission Sniper, the Daddy of the Districts, ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time... That is that is so badass, by the way. Hey, Jordan. Legit. Hey, what's up? Here, let me turn this light on real quick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I gotta say, um, there's so much there's so much cool in that intro, but the uh, my favorite part is you coming around the corner. I think it was for the Wow. Uh, you and Sierra it was a promo for you and Sierra. You came around with the straight up John Moxley promo. I mean, you even had the jacket and everything. You almost even had the head swerve. You know, <laughs> it was like. I mean, it was like legit. Like Sierra cuts this very passion promo. I, I encourage everybody to go back and check, find this on YouTube or find this on Wow. Um, Sierra cuts this impassioned promo. It's it's like a classic promo, and then you come around the corner and you're just like, no. And then you do this Moxley promo that, you, and you're wearing the leather jacket too. It's great, and I just I'm just like that's that's so badass. So welcome to Mission Pro Spotlight, Jordan. How you doing? Doc, thank you so much. I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, it's been an interesting week in uh, women's wrestling. All kinds of cool stuff going on. We got. Uh, we're going to go over the uh, the the news from the week here in just a little bit, as well as we have chosen the banger of the week. I'm going to see if you agree with our picks for banger of the week. And but first, we got a little thing to get uh, to remind. The Mission Pro Faithful of who you are, who you really are. Remind everybody of your name. But also, uh, our new fans, new members of the family, that this is the why you're a name to keep in their heads for you never know what might happen at the next Mission Pro event. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that is absolutely right. So uh, if you know me, uh, thank you so much for uh, supporting me on this journey. I'm about to hit seven years in pro wrestling, which is insane. Um, but if you don't know me, uh, my name is Jordan Blade, the submission sniper, daddy of the district, ankle breaker, whatever you want to call me. But uh, one thing for certain that you can call me is badass. Absolutely badass. Now, your Instagram is private, correct? Pretty much. Yep. So started a new job. So had yeah, to. <laughs> yep. Had to put it on private uh, for the time being. Um, so just kind of like working around that. So, uh, but it, it's exciting. It's just, it's exciting starting a new job. You know, a new nine to five. So you know, got to pay the bills until you know wrestling pays them for me. You know. Absolutely, absolutely, and of course, you know. <laughs> It's like your secret identity. You know, you get your Clark Kent at your shoot job, and then you know you're gonna go uh, beat some, beat some, beat some ass later in the evening. Well, we have a thing uh, to get to know everybody. Um, we have this thing called the Insta Insanity, 
and it's totally not ripped off from Sean Evans and Hot Ones. It's totally not ripped off from his gimmick. <laughs> but you don't, your Instagram is on private, but I did find uh, some some very awesome pictures of you that I think have a backstory we'd love to hear about. So without further ado, let's hit Insta Insanity. My God, it's Insta Insanity. All right, the first picture right here, so badass. Now, you are the new Enjoy Tag Team Champion, uh, one half of the Tag Team Champions. Tell us about this picture. Yeah, so this was taken at Taco Mania maybe about a month ago. So Enjoy Wrestling uh, every year, or at least since last year, I believe, um, participates in something called Taco Mania um, in the Pittsburgh area, Southside Works, um, which is super dope. They have, uh, they put the ring right in the middle of the street. Um, and so there's two blocks of wrestling during the day. So we're wrestling outside in the, like in the scorching heat. Um, but there's also like food trucks around and like, you know, alcohol trucks around. And the, the Cheesecake Factory is like within walking distance. So like, uh, so and then <laughs> this was taken in like backstage. So basically, I believe this was like a former library. Um, I see. So we're all you know kind of congregated in this um, former library, you know, changing and absolutely. Yep, I could go for a taco right now, too, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all congregating in this library, basically to change and and things like that. So um, you know, because we're not in like an actual venue. Um, the photographer, AJ Small, who is absolutely great, um, was like, hey, you know, we need some promo pictures or whatever for, for you and Eel. Uh, so I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so I was like, I thought uh, kind of this area was kind of cool. I, I like the, the silent library as I captioned it when I posted it uh, type vibe going on here. And uh, yeah, me and Eel are like making the same face here. So <laughs> I was going to say. Like, related. <laughs> I don't know, like it's it's all yeah definitely now the only thing I'd say though is uh, and it's 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 Eli or eel is it eel yep eel. eel like the the animal got it eels covering up his gun with the belt where you're proudly displaying your registered weapon there I mean exactly. is that, is that I mean it's when he flexes I mean does he is there a little bit of a uh, insecurity there or is he is he all about it is is that is that is that just how he how he carries the belt. You know, honestly, I think he's probably afraid of ripping the shirt, honestly. If he flexes a little too hard. So. Yeah, the shirt's expensive. I can't flex. I can't yeah, flex. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, you, we're balling on a budget here. So, you know, we can't right. just, you know, keep going to the store buying new shirts. No. Um, he just, that's probably just how he just ended up posing, to be honest with you. Like, there's not, like, yeah. some ulterior motive behind it or whatever. And I totally forgot to tell him that. Oh hey, like we need to take promo photos, and like he was already out of his gear. <laughs> That's why there's that dichotomy there. And I'm like, dang, my you know bad. what though? He's got the look though. He he matched your intensity. He matched your look. That's a tag team right there. I mean, and I can't yeah. imagine having a having a match where the smell of of uh, Philly cheese steaks just you know in the middle of the match just being like. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, I, wait a minute. I I'm in the middle of the match. Hey guys, can we pause? I'm gonna go get this Philly cheesesteak here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. And we take a time. We take, a, take a Philly cheesesteak timeout. All right. Who are these, who are these jokers? <laughs> I know, right? With these kids here, right? So right? obviously uh, Jody Threats, uh, the wild child Jody Threat and the kick demon herself, one of my best friends in this business, uh, Janai Kai. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was taken. We got to the airport. I believe this was in Chicago. Chicago or no yeah well, this is in Chicago or no this is in Texas oh my god now I can't remember I I think it when I found looked at it it was Chicago but it uh it could have been either one all yeah, I gotta say is I'm gonna ask the chat chat um of these three ladies you had to fight in a steel cage who would you choose I mean honestly I I don't know who uh, this would be a uh, it would be an ass whoop on any any choice you make um yeah, I think so. I, yeah. I, I don't let the, the you know, don't let the uh, smile fully on the kick demon. And I gotta ask you, what what's going on with? How is Jody? Why does it look like Jody's like coming out of the thing there? It's like, 
<laughs> right. It looks like she's perched like a bird, like on <laughs> yes. this little like platform thing going on here. I feel like Jody just finds ways to like sit that are just very like I don't know. I, in other like like Jody like I don't know how else to describe. Yeah. Like this is very yeah, much like Jody would do something like this. But yeah, we were uh, in Chicago going to uh, Women's Wrestling Army. So um, that uh, promo that you were talking about beforehand, that's from um, Women's Wrestling Army that was headed by uh, Maria Canellis and Bobby Cruz. Um, so that was, yeah, we were all um, flying in for that, which is, man, I missed that. I That was a time. Uh, please, if somebody from the sound of my voice, Maria, please, I would love to, <laughs> to, to do that again. I, I missed that. That was it was very much like a camaraderie thing. Like just all the girls together, like we're just hanging out and chilling and having a, a, a good time. And it was, there were always like, you know, just great like bonding weekends between all of us. Um, and I really enjoyed uh, working for them. Good, good locker room, huh? It's important to have a good locker room supportive. For sure. Absolutely. I've been watching much of the ring of honor lately. Um, the, particularly the women's division in Ring of Honor, because I think I I yeah. don't know if it's official, but I think Maria Canellis is deeply involved. I've noticed there's a lot going on with Athena, with Ny you know, Nyla Rose. I think Nyla's better in Ring of Honor than she is in in AEW because she gets to be full tilt Nyla, and there's a lot of folks there. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch any of that. So I've kept up bits and pieces like on social media and things like that. Um, so I know, um, like obviously Athena's the the champ, but I think recently or coming up, was it going to be like Athena and Billy Starks versus Queen Aminata and Red Velvet? Red Velvet, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, talk about like four heavy hitters there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean Athena. I would absolutely love to get in the ring with Queen Aminata. I would love to get in the ring with. I mean, all of them. I would love to get in the ring with. Like I haven't. Yeah, I haven't wrestled any of them. So um, that would be absolutely dope. I think Athena is way underrated. Um, just every, like, in ring, like, she's, like, cream of the crop. So that's People, have, people have said she's carrying, uh, she actually, a lot of people have argued that she's been carrying Ring of Honor, at least when it first started. You know, like, just, and, like, it, and her, her mat, like, having the women's matches be the main event of ring of honor. That's, I think that's huge. And a lot, it's a testament to her and the things she's doing, but you know, I, I highly recommend that. And yeah. And you haven't faced them yet. Right? Yes, I know that's exactly not, yet. They, they, know, they, 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 they have no idea what's coming. Exactly. I'll, I'll be there. Don't worry. I'll be there. Mark my words. All right. Uh, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> What what am I doing here? I, uh, you, you, I don't know. This, but somebody said this is the new uh, this is the new Jordan caption of the of the week <laughs> or something. I think that's a margarita, and you, it, they, I think it's one of those. You know, the Kermit. It's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think probably that's what I was going for. Oh no, it was a mimosa. You said it was a mimosa. Yeah, but what like? And I de this is definitely a self. Obviously, it's a selfie. Yeah, I can't remember like what. I have a feeling I was probably talking to, it was probably one of like four people, Gia Scott, mm -hmm. Brooke, Brooke Valentine, Janai Kai, mm -hmm. or Trisha Dora. I was oh. probably talking to one or a combination of those, those four people. Those are probably four of my best friends, obviously, other than Eel uh, in this business. I, we talk probably almost every day. Trish and I communicate a lot of the time via reels on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, I mean, you know, Trish moved, uh, she, um, you know, she's in DC and now she's out on the West coast now. And, you know, I don't see her as often cause obviously she's not in DC, um, on the reg anymore. So, um, you know, I try to keep in touch with her and things like that. And she's, she's doing the damn thing. I'm so proud of her. I'd love to, I love to see how any, successful she any is. Any chance of you joining the infantry, they need a sniper. You know what? That's a great you period. I they love need, that. Let me go. I'm gonna after this. I'm gonna put in my application on Twitter. I think so. Because you got you got the you got the Navy, you got the Marine, you got Trish, and then they need that sniper, that submission sniper coming in. You know what? Crosshairs. You're right. Yep, I'm gonna put in my application oh. right after this podcast. 
Oh, oh, and we also need to get Jordan back to an MPW show. I know Please. that much. Let's go. Ryan says hey, that. Hit me up. You know where to find me. Toned in the chat. He has a question. Does anyone kick harder than Janiah Kai? Nope. <laughs> Without hesitation. Nope. And I, I wrestled Janiah a grand total of, I think, six times. No. Now, let me ask you, what, what do you think has more force? A kick from Janiah Kai or a strike from Jordan Blade? <laughs> Or do we need to bust out the Dave and Buster's uh, punch machine? Yeah, I think we may have to bust out the Dave and Buster's punch machine. And I'm going to say, probably because I'm a generous person, uh, I'm going to say Janai Kai's kicks. Probably. Okay. All right, we'll see. All right, we'll see. What do you think in the chat? Do you think Janai Kai's kicks are more or less powerful than, uh, than uh, Jordan Blade's strikes? Now, again... Your strikes is just only part of your arsenal. You're the submission sniper too. So, you know, just when they, that's, you know, when they're when they're avoiding the strike, then you're going to come in with the Kurt Angle ankle lock or so, yeah. you know, or some kind of you know uh, submission specialist. You never know what's going to happen there. Um, uh, this is a great picture. Two great people. Yes. This was, oh my God, this is so dope. So um, I want to preface uh, by saying that I may or may not have been tipsy in this photo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this was after Wally Mania wait, this year. Wait a minute. I'm we gone. have this and then right. this. <laughs> Beautiful segue. I mean, you really couldn't have been any better, right? Right. Um, but I'm walking to my car and, I, and I'm like, holy shit, oh, that's fucking Big E. And I was like... So I go up to him and verbatim, I was like, hey, Biggie, I'm sorry for being a mark, but can I take a picture with you? <laughs> and he was like, of course. Like, he was like super nice about it. Like, because obviously people were coming up to him um, asking for a photo. So this was like the icing on the cake after, uh, you know, being at Wale Mania. That's that's so cool. That have you Are you familiar with this project, uh, Our Heroes Rock? Have you been following that at all? It's a, it's a variation of Schoolhouse Rock. Um, Love it, that. It highlights um, African American history and a lot of a lot of stuff like that. It's really cool. I, everybody, check it out. It's a uh, project that he's been spearheading, and you know, it's it's unfortunate because of his injury, but it actually it he had a lot more time to devote to it because of his injury. So that's been really cool. So I highly recommend. But this is such an awesome picture. These are two of my favorite people right there, just chilling. And yeah, like you said, a little tipsy. They gave yeah. you the nerve to go ask a. Asking for the picture and look how look how he was totally gracious for that. Yeah, he was. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really a stand up guy. I mean, as as everyone has always said. So I didn't think anything different was going to happen or you know was going to come of that. But like, just <laughs> a super nice person. Awesome, awesome. And uh, who's this? Ah, dang. Where's the Mariah Carey gif of I don't know her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Man. That's me. That's I was. Dang, my mom's upstairs. I could ask her how old I was, <laughs> but in this photo, this photo is on her coffee table. Um, but uh, dang, maybe I was in definitely elementary school. Maybe kindergarten, first grade. Like I was tall for my age. Um, but yep, that you know the 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 tights and the. What are these? Am I wearing clogs? Like what, I, what are those? <laughs> what are the yeah, exactly. What are those? What is the hand on the hip going on? The the that's how I wore my hair well, a lot of the in time. Your, in your defense with the hand on the hip, a lot of time that's the photographer. They always they oh. make you like twist your neck and your hand and put your hand behind your head. Now that might be the photo, but yeah, <laughs> you, you almost you're smiling, but in a way it looks like you might be slightly grit gritting your teeth. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm probably very <laughs> uncomfortable here. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just like, there's just a lot going on. But yeah, like this, this was the style back in the day for you Gen Zers. You may be watching this. <laughs> yep, that was that was the style. What if you could say tell this girl anything uh, right now, like from what you know now about her future? What would you tell her? What advice would you give her? And uh, what are some things you could tell her? Man, I would tell her. You're going to make it, kid. You just got to keep grinding. Uh, any piece of advice? 
be the best in every room you walk into. Ooh. That's Which I'm good. still working on that now. <laughs> that's that's huge. That's that's for all of us. I love that. Yeah. Be the best. Not be the smartest, not be this, but just be the best. And uh, be the be best. The best. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself, and especially mm -hmm. with starting this new job, I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I put a lot of pressure on myself, and I'm my own worst critic because that way no one else can be um, my worst critic. It comes from myself, comes from within. And that, that, but that to me is, is I love that philosophy because that's, you're always stri striving to be the best version of you, be better today than you were yesterday. And on the flip side is, how, how do you feel about this, about like only compare yourself to wh who you were yesterday. Don't compare yourself to, you get, you know, compare yourself to others just to see if, you know, how far you're going, but more so compare yourself to where you were yesterday on your journey. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I'm human, right? Like we all are, um, yeah. or, you know, well, I guess they, they did say aliens existed, right? Well, um, but anyway, uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we have, we might have to check, to check you for the, the X, the, the X-Men X, uh, Professor X gene or whatever the, right. You, yeah. might, you, you might have some Wolverine <laughs> you know, or something. Um, but I, I do compare myself to other people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, I'm not going to say it's normal or like something that everyone does. Cause I don't know that. Um, mm -hmm. I just know that I do it and I know that I have to constantly check myself and not compare myself to other people. And also, um, yeah, com comparing is a stealer of joy. You're correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and not compare myself to other people and, mm -hmm. you know, 1% better, uh, you know, every day, if I look at myself today versus where I was in wrestling, I started wrestling in 2017 or I made my debut in 2017, um, where I was even, uh, at 2019 or 2020, whatever, it's vastly different. I mean, I, I just got announced for Kitsune again to go back to the West coast in August. And that's very exciting for me. Nice. Um, and so, you know, and I still have more shows and more matches, you know, to be announced or whatever. So that is amazing. Like I've done things that I, I knew I was going to, because I just have that drive, but still when it happens, it almost like, I almost kind of don't believe it. I'm like, man, I can't believe like I got here, but I can also believe it too, because I told myself I was going to do that. Yeah. Well, that's it. And, and uh, have you been to Japan? That is the goal. I've been That's trying it. to get there for like the past year. And it's, it's the one, well, not the one thing, but the, the one of the biggest things that's um, eluded me. And I'm really trying to get over there. I, I just really think that my style would lend itself very well over there. It, I think it would be a very seamless, um, easy transition um, to wrestle over there. And uh, that's, that's absolutely one of my dreams and two to get back over to the UK, but uh, Japan is, is a really big one. So UK, Japan, and of course, San Antonio, Texas for mission pro wrestling. Got to get you back there. Yes. Love to have, love, love to have a surprise run in or something. Uh, Cause we got summer yes. 11 coming up on uh, yeah. June, on June 15th. We'll uh, you never know. Might uh, the, the, the daddy of the district might be the sniper of San Antonio when I show up. Well, speak, there's so much going on in women's wrestling. I'd love to get your take. Uh, uh, first, we got a segment called Women's Wrestling News or the Weekend Women's Wrestling. We haven't quite decided what the title is, but let's, let's get to the news in women's wrestling. <laughs> And I always, I always love that little bit of Thunder Rosa yelling at uh, Carolina, the uh, the GM of uh, of Mission Pro Wrestling. But here we go. We've got our first. This was a bombshell. Um, I don't know if you watch, if you heard or watch, but uh, Roxanne Perez was uh, found out who her opponent at Battleground was going to be. None other than Jordan Grace. What are your thoughts, Jordan? The other Jordan. What are your thoughts? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yes. Hell yeah. A hundred times yeah. Fuck oh. yeah. I, like, 
I was jumping out of my seat. Well, first of all, I was jumping out of my seat because Sexy Red was on NXT. Yep. And I just thought that was just, that was like, this is great. Yeah. Um, and then when I saw Jordan Grace uh, was on there and going to be, cha- it brought, it came out with a TNA knockout champion. Yes. Uh, so again, representing TNA, you know, really, I think Jordan Grace is has kind of become, in a lot of ways, the the flag bearer of TNA, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with, you know, with her being in the rumble, obviously earlier this year and now, um, on NXT TV, and then obviously going to be on an NXT, uh, PLE, uh, so, um, this is just fantastic. And I think the world of Jordan, I think she is one of the best professional wrestlers, uh, in the world. Uh, notice I didn't say just female fresh professional wrestlers, one of the best professional wrestlers in the world, uh, regardless of gender. Um, and she, she has body goals as well. Like me and uh, some of my friends, um, outside of wrestling, uh, they're my jujitsu teammates. Um, we'll send each other like, you know, inspo or like whatever. And Jordan Grace is someone who consistently comes up as like body goals and body inspo. Uh, so I mean, legit, I could not be happier for her. Like, this is absolutely, this is groundbreaking what she's been doing. I mean, what she's been doing for a while has been groundbreaking, but just this year, she's had a killer 2024. We're not even halfway done yet. Tremendous. And and you're right. Like she is like, I like what you said, the, the banner, the flag carrier, the banner for, for uh, the TNA. And I, it's, it's a testament that she, they're, they're ha- including her in this. I mean, I popped. So, I mean, I think a lot of people popped when, when she, when I saw Jordan Grace come on the screen, I, just of the name, yeah, that was a huge pop. Do you think, not to get into the 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 messy part of before, but you think now that there's kind of new leadership at WWE, do you think we're going to see a a the women's division in, in WWE be a little bit more elevated and a lot of cool things like this happening in the future? Yeah, so I think it kind of already started. I think. Um... You know, I mean, we can go, even go back as far as, you know, to the, the woman's, you know, rev- evolution. Or evolution, revolution. yeah. Um, but just within, like, the past year, I guess, you know, kind of, I think what I want to kind of focus on, I mean, with the acquisition of Jade Cargill, mm-hmm. um, I think that was a big thing. Um, love her. She's mm-hmm. also body goals and body inspo. Um, and I think with the ac- acquisition of Jade, I think with the, I guess it's not really technically a crossover if just you know tna um wrestlers are coming over to wwe and not vice versa that's i guess it's not technically a crossover but what with jordan grace uh again being in the rumble and then coming to nxt um i think that is obviously going to um elevate the women's division in wwe as well um and obviously i think it it does work uh for tna as far as i guess for lack of a better term like kind of clout um you know even if they don't physically have wwe you know wrestlers coming to tna um again just the sheer appearance of jordan grace on nxt tv i think also um elevates tna at the same time not yet Um, Imagine Rin Sinclair showing up at that TNA or something like that. Right, right. Rin yeah. Sinclair. She used to go by a different name. I'm trying to remember something Rinkowski. I, I don't know. Oh, I don't remember. That Maddie Rinkowski, I think. Maddie Rinkowski. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, Brian was big B was telling us that uh, there are two big crossover women's matches announced. Yeah, we're gonna get to the other one that really floored me. This one right here. TBS champion Mercedes Monet to face CMML's Stephanie Vakura at Forbidden Door. She said, and now this was actually, this. there's a kind of a throwback here. Um, I don't know if you've ever been on Thunder Rosa's uh, taco vlog before, but um, they uh, she, Stephanie uh, actually said that her favorite match of all time was her match with uh, Mercedes at New Japan. Hell yeah. Now they're running it back at Forbidden Door. So another Forbidden Door is open. Yeah, right. The door is opening everywhere. You better be careful behind you. A door might open. And Exactly. I mean, I mean, maybe after a while I might need to invest in some locks here. But, <laughs> you know, we, I, I'm loving all these people walking through all these doors. <laughs> so let's go. Oh, this is so cool. I, I think this, this is going to be such a tremendous match. And it's really um, – I, I think the more – 
do you feel like the more of these kind of crossovers is it mutually beneficial? I mean, I know you know it's it's one thing like it it when the WWE highlights a TNA, but do you think this is these kind of things are beneficial to all women's wrestling? I think so. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're talking exposure. Um, we're talking, um, well, I was about to say getting more eyes on the product, but that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're talking exposure, we're talking opportunities. Yes. Um, and for this, I think this, for this specific door to open rather, um, I think it's just a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, admittedly, I'm not as familiar with, um, uh, Stephanie um, Vaquer, did I say mm -hmm. that? So, admittedly, I'm not as familiar with her. Um, it's it's there's so much wrestling; it's hard to keep up with it all. But, um, but I think this is just like a, good thing. a win win for for both companies and both parties because, um, again, they're just gaining more exposure in both markets. Um, yes, and in uh, uh, AEW and TBS, TNT, Warner the Warner Brothers, um, and CMM. L um, as well. So, because Mercedes is such a big star, everybody knows who she is. Um, so, just that alone with her star power, um, you know, it's going to be beneficial for all, I think. That's going to be huge. And, you know, you may not know her now, but I, I'm sure someday you keep uh, their, your your paths will cross. Oh, let's and go. She'll, and she'll find out who you are as well hey, when she gets hey. in those the snipers' crosshairs. Let's um, get it. I'm ready. Becky Lynch to take an extended time off after loss to Liv Morgan on Raw. Um, to quote, to quote uh, Wrestling Observer, Becky Lynch has taken extended leave from what I, this is, uh, uh, believe uh, this is Meltzer. Uh, from what I told you, it's not like a short period of time. She's looking for a long time out. I think she was originally supposed to take time off and then um, until Rhea, Rhea Ripley got hurt. And so now she came back and, and to have this banger with uh, Liv Morgan, and now she's taking time off. Have you, uh, what are your thoughts on Becky Lynch? I mean, she is one of the four, you know, what have you. Um, and um, uh, do you, th you think she, you, you see her maybe try going uh, independent? You see her going WWE back, or do you see her going AEW? Uh, good question. Uh, so, first of all, Becky Lynch is my favorite of the four horsewomen. Um, yes. I was there when she won her first women's championship in WWE, uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship at yeah. Backlash. Uh, it was in Virginia, uh, somewhere in Virginia. Um, mm -hmm. So that was yeah. that was dope. And I met her before at like a Comic Con, which was dope as well. Um, and I was obviously completely fangirling. I, <laughs> my friends know I love me some Becky Lynch. She's she's great. Um, and to the mark her, of the district. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and just to see her like progression, um, you know, over the yeah. years has been fantastic. Um, I, I'm super happy for her. Um, as far as where I see her going, so I actually had this conversation with um, one of my friends, I think maybe a couple of days ago. So if she comes back to wrestling, I think she's coming back to WWE. I mean, you know, Seth is there. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't see her going anywhere else if she's coming back to wrestling. If she doesn't, I see her going to Hollywood. Ah, interesting. So you know, she could she could do that that action star kind of thing. Or if she just wants, I mean, I could, you know, it's not for for us to speculate, but I I would assume that she probably, you know, wants time with her daughter, which is totally understandable. Yeah. Um. And then, so I either see her going back to WWE, going to Hollywood, or just chilling out. I mean, I just feel like at this Nothing point wrong, she's man. she's made. You know, she is one of yeah. I mean, she's one of the best female wrestlers you know, within the past, like, 10, 15 years or whatever. She's one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. she, she, you know, has done almost everything there is to do in WWE. Um, and, you know, she's been, she was on Young Rock. She just, her yep. book just came out. She, if she wanted to, she could just chill. <laughs> she, could, yep. she could just chill for the rest of her life. She, well, she's made. She can like, chill. I mean, I can doubt until, that she wants to, but... Yeah. Well, there she could chill until they back up that uh, Fast and the Furious money, and then when they make Fast and the Furious twenty five, she'll. <laughs> That's she'll... it. She's the next one, right? Fast so... twenty five featuring Becky Lynch. Rebecca. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and there's the, and and just taking time off to be with your daughter. I mean, that's 
I mean, that's cool too. Do you know, I, she's already kind of proven herself, you know, then, and she's got the book money rolling in now. So, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe she'll, she'll hold off for a while and then, uh, you know, come back and pull the, um, you know, show up like a, like a Trish Stratus or Alita or something like that. Yeah, it, absolutely. Like, I mean, you know, I think if she wants to keep doing this and like, by all means, she, again, in my opinion is, is one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Um, so uh, but I think in the ring and on the mic, I think she really is one of the, the total package. Um, so I, she could do anything she wants. I mean, she's set for the rest of her life. So that's that's what I'm trying to be like. I'm trying to be like Becky Lynch. Just be set for the rest of my life. I'm set now. I'm set. Now, um, from this match, there was an, another controversial uh, moment. I don't know how many people saw this, but, uh, you know, in – Inadvert, I don't know. I mean, he was kind of trying to help, but inadvertently, Dominic Mysterio helped defeat Becky Lynch, helped Liv get the win by being slammed into the door by Braun Strowman. He was actually, he was actually like the, his, he kind of was the secondary cause of it. But uh, as she's walking away, a little smooch action on Dominic Mysterio. People are wondering one, what's Liv's play here, and two, what's going to happen when Mommy returns. <laughs> Did she step in it? Liv, okay. girl, you better run. You better <laughs> run. Because, <laughs> wait, wait, look, mommy's always on top, all right? So, I mean, look, I am a huge Rhea Ripley fan. I love everything about Rhea Ripley. She Again, she's also body inspo. Like, damn, all these people, her and Bianca, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you want to talk about the total package again. I think Rhea has it. She has a look. She has wrestling ability. She has the mic skills. She has the facial expressions, the little nuances. Yes. That, you know, kind of make her, like, like, maybe to the naked eye, you may not pick up on the little subtleties. Rhea has it. Or uh, mm -hmm. Rhea has it. Um, so when she comes back, this is going to be a very interesting story, I feel, because, like, Liv has been leveling up, I feel, the past couple years. Yes. So I feel definitely. like this is a really great character arc for her. And I think a very a, a good uh, kind of um, shift, a uh, pivot, um, mm -hmm. you know, when mommy comes back. Because the Judgment Day has been rocking and rolling and things like that. And, and you know, sometimes with certain things or certain storylines or whatever, after a little bit, you know, they, they may start to kind of feel a little stale. Um, so I think mm -hmm. adding, you know, the caveat now of Liv Morgan um, into this dynamic, I really think is going to make for some really entertaining TV. Yes, definitely. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's going to be, you know, there's good. This will go for a while. I think that, at, you know, once they ditch the thing that she did with CJ Perry, you know, which I, I love CJ, but it's just that was that, that was kind of weird. That, I don't know what they were the whole Miro thing or, or you know, yeah. it, but like, yeah, like both. I think that she's really um, changed. You know, she's really evolved from the Riot Squad, you know, and she's really become this really. And people are behind her, and it, it's it's. I mean, she's that she's a heel, but it's like you know, she's she's one of those heels, kind of like that that you you, you want to see what she's going to do. And I thought this was such a great uh, great heel moment, and we're going to see what happens. And then when Rhea comes back. What's mommy going to have to say? That's going to be quite I, a question for you because it's a, uh, as a wrestler, do you pick up like do you pick up on things that most fans don't necessarily like? You go, oh, I see what they did there, or oh, I think I, I know what this like. Do you find yourself appreciating what's done in the ring more? And on the on the other side, do you find yourself? Um, Picking out ex like little details here and there that we might, the rest of us might miss. Yeah, for sure. So I think there's absolutely um, an art uh, to uh, TV, uh, mm -hmm. uh, TV wrestling. Um, so picking up things like positioning. Oh, okay, they needed to get to this spot, so they position themselves this way, or um, you know what have you. Um, I'm trying to think of like a specific example. So I'm like probably going to talk a little vague here, but, um, just like things like that. And it's very interesting to, um, 
one of my coaches who um, helped train me and um, we still we talk almost every day at this point um, is uh, WWE referee uh, Chip Danning. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, <laughs> so I, I messaged him uh, Tuesday and I was like, Chip, I was like, you fucking kidding me? Sexy red. Are you kidding me? And then he <laughs> sent me a photo of, of him and her like together, like taking a photo together. I was like, I hate you. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was super dope though. Yeah. But, um, uh, so, you know, we'll talk and we'll converse and I'll be like, Hey, like, you know, I saw this or whatever. And he will just give a ton of feedback. Not only to me, we have like a group chat of um, a few other people that he helped train and things like that. And so we'll talk about, you know, certain matches and, you know, why, why they worked and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a really good asset to kind of have in my back pocket sometimes yeah. um, to have like somebody like him kind of like in my ear, like critiquing my stuff. Um, so we'll talk about some of those, those nuances of why they did this, why this was placed here. Um, you know, and I think too, you know, part of wrestling, obviously, um, in addition to the athletic portion, um, is the psychological portion. Yeah. You're, you're essentially, this sounds bad, but like you're manipulating people to well, react yeah. in a way that you want them to react. Mm -hmm. And that is very powerful. And that's how we're able to tell stories with our bodies. Yes. And um, it's, it's just as cool if you're playing the heel to get the boo as it is to when you're playing the here the the face to get the cheer. I mean, I I think sometimes you know between Christian Cage and uh, Don Callis, I don't know who gets the thunder or Dominic. Dominic yeah, gets the yeah. gum. I don't know. We should have a boo contest to see who could bring out Dominic Mysterio, Don Callis, and Christian Cage, and just get one of those oh my, meters my to see who gets the biggest biggest moves. Um, at the uh, post uh, at the scrum. Uh, from AW uh, Double or Nothing, Tony Khan not only stated that he's open to the possibility of women's tag team titles, so you better get on the phone with Trish but, um, about that, but also he's looking at the possibility of mixed tag belts. So tell your tell your boy Eel, you know, what's going on. You know, hey, look what's going on. So he opened to the uh, mixed tag as well as uh, women's tag team. Oh, yeah. Just to get your perspective on... Um, Women's tag team, because, you know, just elevating women's matches in general, it seems, you know, people are used to say the women's matches are the popcorn match or what have you. And, you know, the, but things ever since, like with Evolution, with, with places like Mission Pro, seems to be elevating. Um, women's tag teams are really hard to really keep together and keep solid. Mission Pro, of course, had the Renegade Twins. We had Bougie Reality. We now have the you know there's the King Bees. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of and, and uh, facing the King Bees at Mission at Mission Pro this uh, this June is going to be Fire and Fury, Nova Phoenix, and Morgan Mercy, who uh, are a power. They're basically like the Demolition or Road Warriors of uh, women's wrestling. Right. Um, what is your what are your thoughts though on uh, do you see women's tag team wrestling? Um, growing in popularity in the independent scene and the mainstream scene and also what's your with obviously being a champion of intergender what are your um or mixed tag up there's uh, they say it differently what are your thoughts on that is that becoming a more popular more mainstream uh division man that's a good question um so i think at least as it stands now right so Eel and I were put together like randomly in like 2019, like barely knew each other. We were put together and it just ended up working. Right. Yeah. Um, but we both know, at least as it stands now within the industry, as far as climbing to um, bigger companies, um, there's at least again, as of now, there's not a demand for intergender, uh, well, in, uh, intergender tag teams. So a tag team that I enjoy um, a lot, but you know, for TV purposes, like this is just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, Lady Frost and and Victor Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. yes. Um, love both of them, both as people and as wrestlers. Um, but I think, and I'll just speak for myself, I know that at least, again, for TV products, 
there's not a clamoring for that. So at a certain point um, for intergender tag teams, we kind of reach our ceiling and then we kind of have to like go separate ways. So obviously, yeah. you know, EO is the wrestler's lab champion and then I'm doing my own thing, you know, over here, um, which is great. Like, you know, with EO and I support each other so much and mm -hmm. we just want to see each other grow, right? Yeah. Um, so we both know that there's like kind of a ceiling there that people aren't really at this moment in time going to be actively seeking intergender tag teams. Mm -hmm. um, as far as it being accepted in the industry, I think the which grinds my gears, but the main objection that people have to intergender wrestling is they equate it to domestic violence, which the 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 difference there is that is that there's this the consent portion right so yeah. obviously in domestic violence there is mm -hmm. no consent in intergender wrestling there is um so if we can get past that which i think is gonna gonna take a minute because not only do we have to kind of get past that as far as like the higher ups and things like that we also have to get past that um, within the the general audience as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be tricky, especially if you have um, if you have sponsors, mm -hmm. um, you have if you're talking like TV deals, yeah. um, you know, they got to think about whoever the spot like WWE got to think it has to think about Snickers yep. or, you know, <laughs> AEW has to think about Domino's or like mm -hmm. whatever, whoever the sponsors are. And they're going to see that and be like, mm, we don't agree. And they're going to pull the sponsor sponsorship or the, the deal or what have you. So yeah. it's, it's more, um, unfortunately th there's more pieces at play there that are going to play into, I think us being able to see or not see, um, even mixed tag team titles. So even if it's a thing where if, you know, the two two males are in the ring and one of the males tags his female partner, yeah. then the female partner automatically has to come in. You know, you might even have some pushback with that, yeah. um, unfortunately. So obviously it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to fuck up whoever I'm going to fuck up. <laughs> you know, man, woman, a non-binary person. So uh, it don't matter to me. Um, I love wrestling anybody and everybody but again i understand the uh television yeah. aspect of it as well change changing minds take time it take you know it, you, right. it does take some time it takes it's a process i mean heck you know we had that you know the women's evolution had to happen and what well, that really wasn't that long ago when you really think about it right in, in relation to how long wrestling's been a thing um but then again you know you could always still see like masha slamovich wrestling a bear you know it's like you know, i mean it's like yeah, well, I mean, Masha will. I think Masha will wrestle anything. Yeah, she will anything. wrestle any anybody, anywhere, any animal. It does not matter. <laughs> Masha is one of my favorite people in wrestling. She's one of my favorite oh. opponents. Uh, she she is someone who I try to emulate like my style after. If there's anyone on the indies that I look up to, it would probably be Masha. Oh my god, you you guys, uh, your battles at the uh, was it the combat? Uh, oh, CFU, yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, I, that's. Um, I mean, I, my first time watching you was at a Mission Pro event. And I caught, I caught a couple dark matches on AEW with you, but then I, you, you entered this. Uh, it was a, a combat tournament or something, and it was like I remember you and Masa, and, and and Masa was just like, it was, it was brutal. I was like, I love it, and like Lady Frost was in it too, and I was just like. Yep. This is brutal. And then you, you're now the champion, right? Yeah, like you defeated Masha for that. I did, yes. Yep. So now the, the combat fights unlimited champion. Um, so you know, just looking for my next challenger, man. Uh -oh. I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll defend that belt anywhere. Masha might bring the bear. Maybe I'll have to fight the Okay, bear. well, you know, if she brings a bear, <laughs> then here you go. You can hey, after it. watching if cocaine bear can be a movie, then you never know. <laughs> You never know what might start happening. You're like, Rrr. right, exactly. And it's just like, okay, I don't want either the bear nor the cocaine. So, oh, but you know, Janai Kai can show up too. We we might we still got it. We still got to figure out who, who strikes are are better. Um, yeah. did you did you have a chance to watch much wrestling this past week? Uh, this past week, yeah. Did you catch the uh, like Double or Nothing or King? Yeah. Of so, uh, watch Double or Nothing. I was so and. Like, I don't know if anybody saw my tweet or whatever, but I was so stoked. So first thing or, you know, first match 
of the night on the pre-show, Deanna Perrazzo versus Thunder Rosa. The crowd was super fucking loud for them, and it, oh. it gave me goosebumps. Like I almost like shed a tear, like legit. Yeah. Like, I'm not. I I know I can be extra, but I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Either, but like I was just like, fuck yeah. Like what do you think that what you can do with two talented women who like are just fantastic wrestlers have been in the ring with both of them, mm -hmm. uh, fantastic wrestlers. And the crowd is over here being so loud for them before they even locked up. I just thought I was yeah. chef's kiss. That was great. And, you know, Vegas is, uh, is such a great crowd, but more so had the hype behind those two. I mean, those are two badasses in the ring and they're kicking it off on the buy-in yep. for, for, for the two of them. What did you think of, uh, what do you think of Thunder Presley? What did you think of her uh, her Elvis get like? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Almost <laughs> the honky tonk, the honky tonk Rosa. <laughs> Thunder is so like she is like it's like low key but also high key funny. Like <laughs> it's so it's so fun to interact with her. So when I'm you know sometimes you know when I'm backstage or whatever at AEW, like we'll have just a fantastic conversation. So it's always good to see Thunder, uh, but she's always making me laugh too. Yeah. So like she's just a goofball. So. She, is, she she gets that voice. Oh, you guys, <laughs> that voice. <laughs> well. We uh we always uh try to highlight the banger of the week, and uh, this the banger of the week comes from Double or Nothing. Hold on to your Kulos Mission Pro fans! My God, it's the banger of the week. All right, in my poor JR impersonation. All right, here we go. The banger of the week is da, 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 the CEO versus Willow Flippin' Nightingale. I I don't know if you got if you've been following the uh, the wrestling club. It's a it's a um, a group in the, you know what I'm talking about. They're in New York. Brooklyn, it's, right? I think it's New York or somewhere. Yep. And they uh, they watch they watch wrestling, and then Willow walked in. It yep, showed up. Not, like again, like when you want to talk about goosebumps or yes. uh, talk about someone who has a connection with the crowd just because they can feel how genuine she is, that's mm -hmm. Willow. That's Willow, 100 percent And I saw so many people online, like they're so happy for Willow. I literally don't know any anybody who does not like Willow. Mm -mm. If you don't like Willow, you are the problem. Legit. It, Legit. And I don't opinion. say that about many people, but I say that about Willow. Well, I say that about my mom, and I say that about Willow. There you go. And the thing is, just not not even Malachi Black or Julia Hart's uh, Black Ooze could turn her heel. You know, it can, yeah, it can stop her from that. This was such a banger. Um, this was one of those things where I think a lot of people had a pretty good idea that it might, especially with the hints about Statlander, which we'll talk about. Yep. But as far as a match, um, first of all, the entrances. Um, Willow coming out with the uh, a different hairstyle, which was pretty, I thought looked dope. I'm I'm used to the purple kind of you know mm -hmm. ha hair that she's had, but this I thought looked pretty dope. Yeah. And then uh, of course Mercedes coming out with the the whole showgirls and the drum. She the always drum does section. it up big. I, I expected <laughs> nothing less from Mercedes. <laughs> oh, it was so cool. And, but I think this was this was one of those things where, and, and some of my uh, some of my friends that are wrestling fans were starting to cool on Mercedes because she hadn't wrestled in AW yet, and you know she'd been promoting but just not really doing anything. Um, do you feel like that that changed a lot of minds with this match? I think so. I think so. Absolutely. Um, Mercedes got in there, and at least from what I remember, it didn't look like she missed a beat. So, um, and then all, obviously, you know, she's in there with Willow too. Not to say that like <laughs> Willow is like the veteran, but like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like they're both great. Right. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. it was going to be a very, in my opinion, cause I've wrestled Willow as well. Um, one of my favorite matches I've ever had. Um, and she was in there with an up and coming and she's already, she's already fucking fantastic, but Mercedes was in there with, Probably someone who's going to go down in wrestling as one of the best. Yeah, in, in Willow. 
this 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 could be like a a flare versus steamboat kind of thing, you know, down the line. I mean, I don't know. It's just these are these are two names that I think will when we look back um years from now at women's wrestling, these are two names. I mean, you know, Mercedes is already a, a as Sasha Banks, but Willow's fantastic. Um, yeah. This right here, the, the 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 very physical match. Yeah, was not it was it was it was not a uh, pillow fight, if you will, by any stretch of the means. That that spot on the apron, which I understand, can you confirm? Is the apron the hardest part of the <laughs> ring? Is that I've I've heard rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm not really sure. Nobody's really like tested it. <laughs> uh, yes, the the <laughs> the apron is absolutely the hardest part of the ring, unless you want to get technical and say the posts. Yeah, uh, but it's, like the yeah. ring proper, I guess, without the post. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes, it's absolutely the hardest part of the ring. So taking anything on that area, in that area, whatever, uh, hurts mm -hmm. and hurts like hell. All uh, right. So I, don't recommend. I got to get you to rate rate Willow's ankle lock here. What's she doing right? And um, I don't know. Did she is she should she bend the hips a little bit more? Or what what is she, what's her technique looking like there? Yep. So I'm trying like I'm excuse my big old forehead, y'all. Uh, but <laughs> I'm trying to like get up in here. And look at it. So yeah. So yeah, I would swivel the hips around uh, a little bit. Um, so you get a little more torque on that ankle mm -hmm. um but other than that as far as like hand placement like looks good i would just like crank like soldier boy said crank that bitch crank that, <laughs> crank, <laughs> crank that bitch <laughs> and of course the outcome uh the former sasha banks mercedes monet is your new tbs champion of course now she's got her hands full with stephanie vacour but then which uh, a twist that a lot of us think saw coming statlander turned on her friend how can you turn i mean the, i in in aew there's there's three constants that if you want to turn heel you beat up rio you turn on will you make willow sad or you get stokely as your manager <laughs> you you've got two of these right there can i just can i just say how Unserious Stokely is like. Can we just talk about that for a second? Yeah, he is so unserious, like. <laughs> just, but but again, you. That's why Stokely is good, right? He is mm -hmm. good at what he does because he's very good at those nuanced yeah. things, those very small, minor things that you may not notice like initially, but he's very good at that. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you can see it coming, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But Statlander, too, is somebody that I just think has a world of potential who's already uh, great, who I've seen, obviously, as we all have on the indies. Mm -hmm. um, so we know how great she is, um, and how both her and Willow. So it's really just a warm feeling to see both of them uh, being successful on such a big stage like AEW. As heartbreaking as this turn was, this means we're going to get a Willow versus Statlander feud which is something that, as fans, we all want. I think they they're gonna they're gonna blow it out of the water, and they're gonna show why that they're two of, that they're two of the best in AEW, I, and I stand on that. And, stand and on we're that. gonna have Stokely on the sidelines being and Stokely being <laughs> unserious. <laughs> first, time, yes. first, time, first time I ever saw Stokely, it was he was a, a different name at WWE, and there was, I don't know if you remember the trend. Uh, it was a I think it was a TikTok trend where. Where, uh, where girls would 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 like pose and then they would drop and then they would like twerk and it was like a like to different music <laughs> and so uh, Dakota Kai was doing it and then she dropped and then it cut to Stokely going. I do remember that. He, yep. he goes, I don't know what you're thinking you were going to see, but we're going to watch Scooby Doo Mysteries at WrestleMania. Yes, I do remember. I remember <laughs> seeing that on Twitter and I was, oh, yep, thank you, Malcolm Bivens. Yep. Yeah, that's so, not. Yep. Oh, that was that, that was that was the Malcolm Bivens. Yes, yes, that was yeah. this. Well, we have one more segment here, and uh, really, it's going to be a quick one. But if if the the um, slobber knocker, aka the uh, the banger of the week, was any indication 
of our Warrior of the Week. Any guesses who our Warrior of the Week is? Warrior? Yeah, I'll give you a hint. It was one of the two uh, competitors in that last match. Oh, cool. it got to be Willow. Come on now. Oh, uh, I went. I, it, it... It's like here. I mean, you, you Willow. You know, you got to go with Willow as well. But like, let's look at the stats here. Mercedes Monet, the current AWTBS champion, born in Fairfield, California, which I actually lived uh, for about three years myself. So I'm, I mean, she uh, she might know where the good breakfast burritos are, like I do. Maybe. Um, rookie year, 2010. Insane. Uh, almost, she's, she's going to, I think she's at 968 matches. Jesus Christ. And she's going to hit 1,000 at AEW, I'm sure. Um, have you ever, have you ever faced Mercedes in any, in any capacity? Man, I wish, dude. <laughs> I wish, but no, I haven't. But I will. I yep. Will. And she will, she will get to know the daddy of the district as well. Um, I think, I, how do you feel like uh, she has made the impact people were expecting by joining AW? Do you think that was the, feel like that's the right move for her? And um, what do you, how do you, what are your thoughts on her future going forward? I mean, I know she's got Stephanie on the immediate horizon. What are some things you'd like to see Mercedes do in the future? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think, I'm a big proponent of whatever makes you happy, right? It, you know, so she seems happy in AEW, and that's dope. And I think also she has a, you know, it's a it's a different system, obviously, mm -hmm. than WWE. Um, and then a new crop of talent, new crop of, of women to, yeah. to wrestle. So, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, she has, obviously, she had Willow. She has Statlander. She has Thunder Rosa, you know. So she has, who else? I don't know. Okay. When Jamie Hader comes back, I mean, oh my goodness, yeah, Jamie Hader. So she has just like a whole slew of of new faces to to wrestle, and I think that really is a testament to how good she is and how mm -hmm. uh, she continues to want to push herself and to be to be better. Um, yeah. this is going to be a whole new group of, again, a whole new group of women you know, a, a whole new kind of system or whatever. So, um, you know, I think for her, just like branching out and doing different things, I think that's fantastic. As far as her future in AEW, I, sky's the limit. I mean, you know, that was a pun intended, right? So it's the name <laughs> of her, her song in WWE, but uh, yeah. sky's the limit for her, I think. Um, and I think she'll be a really great asset to the women's division, not only just in ring and, um, you know, star power, but I think she'll really be able to help um, a lot of the the newer girls in the in the company as well. Now, in the meantime, if she wants to take some indie bookings, um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> somebody please, please put me up against her. Um, yes. <laughs> but she's yeah, no, it, she's 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 gonna she's gonna be just fine. I know a lot of people are like uh, they probably think like this was like the wrong move. Let her do her. You ain't her. Yep. Let her Plus, do what the fuck she wants to do. I bet she. I bet she gets a little. She needs some time. But also, she's gonna want some Star Wars filming time too. I'm sure. You know. Ah, she's, yes. Yeah. Man, Dorian. She's got that going for her. Uh, she does seem to be fitting in very nicely. And I don't know. Prince Nana might have a run for his Monet because <laughs> the Mo, the Monet. I don't know if you've seen, but the Monet dance is starting to. Uh, the CEO dance is starting to to be contagious. It already has Mr. With Billy Goat himself, check this out. More hips, Will. Will, more hips. More hips, Will. Yeah, you gotta put the hips. Yeah, more hips. <laughs> You're doing it. Sexy. Sexy dog. All right, so of course Will, <laughs> Will has to work on the hips there, but he's already getting Shota uh, to do the do the dance as well. He'll take that back to New Japan. You never know; that's going to be the new 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the new I'm loving all these dances that are just like gaining traction in AEW. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's like the Prince Nana dance. You got Daniel Garcia or whatever yeah. doing his thing or whatever. That you got <laughs> Mercedes doing her thing. So I mean <laughs> This is secondary to the wrestling, we also teach you how to dance. And they exactly, yeah, right. <laughs> the, the wrestling and the, the dancing is part of it. What would be the Jordan Blade dance? What would be the blade? So, I have no rhythm. So it would, <laughs> if y'all are familiar with Bob's Burgers and Tina, oh, <laughs> that is what I look like. So, <laughs> I mean, that's probably what you're gonna see. And I did actually. <laughs> dance eel and i danced uh at taco mania against the neon blondes we, we started the match with like a dance thing so we have some <laughs> rhythm um poco but some rhythm well that's cool that well you know yeah maybe there you go the bob's burgers shout the jordan shuffle we'll, we'll come up with something <laughs> yeah. well jordan this has been fantastic thank you so much for joining us we'd love to have you back and we'd love to see you on mission pro I think that that would be tremendous. Let's uh, let's get there and you know tell us in the comments who would be her your dream opponent. Should Jordan uh, maybe lay some smack down to Tiffany Nieves, perhaps, or uh, Miranda Alize? We might need a little uh, rearranging. We'll see what's going on. Um, quick uh, quick shout! I want to make sure I got your socials correct. We got Jordan Blade ninety two or Jordan Blade underscore ninety two. Pretty much all your all your socials. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. And then again, just because of the shoot job, had to put, you know, my Instagram, whatever on private. If you go follow me there, I will go ahead. I will confirm you right away. So yeah. don't worry about that. I'm just kind of having to lay low for a little bit. So understand, understand. You got to keep it down. You know, the, don't want to make the VCU crowd upset, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning in on behalf of the daddy of the district, the submission sniper, this is Mind Runner with Mission Pro Spotlight. Check us out again on a mission with Emily May, the Tribal Bay, as well as Veda Scott are going to be on Tuesday again with On a Mission. And then we'll be back next week with a very special guest again. You don't want to miss it. We'll uh, stay and make sure you hit that, not only that subscribe, but hit that bell so you never know what might pop up. A lot of new content for Mission Pro coming your way. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time.